Let's have a look at some different types of books that have been made into book apps. First, we're going to have a look at a book app called Super Harry's Rotten Luck. And I want to show you one of the reasons why this book is a book app, because it's a pretty basic book app. It's a picture book. You'll have a look. And you can see here that you're able to control some app settings. You're able to play the audio or not, highlight the words or not. This bit of control is what helps make this book a book app instead of an ebook. So it's narrated and it's got word by word highlighting. On Monday, he was chased by a swooping swarm of buzzing bees. So you keep turning the page, and each page has a few animations on it, but it doesn't really have anything that you touch and make sounds or animations or anything like that. So it's a pretty basic book. Now let's have a look at some poetry. This is A Words A Bird. And one of the reasons that this is a book app is because you're able to navigate within it. And you'll hear automatic sound in the background. A sails a veil you raise, a great waving shade that plays with wind it sees. So you can see that's narrated and it's got the word by word highlighting and then it's got an animation. Let's watch what happens with the dogs. This book app teaches kids about nouns through story and interactive activities. This page talks about animal nouns in the story and then there's an activity. Let's have a listen. Raccoons are pesky animals, so raccoons are animal nouns that poop out poppy. So the story's talking about the animal nouns, and then let's go play with animal nouns. I'll click on that. This app has a number of opportunities for kids to interact with nouns in a fun way. Franklin Frog is an example of an app that uses story and integrates nonfiction information within that story, and it's really neat. And we learn when Franklin is hungry that he uses his long, sticky tongue to catch food. And then we can touch Franklin, see the blue dots telling us to do that, and the snail, he says, I crush my food inside my mouth between my tongue and my eyeballs. That's fascinating. Can you help me catch that worm? I'm going to go touch that worm. Let's see what happens. Now let's look at a book app that integrates interactivity within the narrative itself. In Treasure Kai and the Seven Cities of Gold, Treasure Kai goes back in time to race Coronado to find the Seven Cities of Gold. Their task is to collect a gold key from each of the Seven Cities of Gold using a map to get from city to city. And on the back of each key is a clue poem. The reader is brought into the story when he's presented with a map and the keys fly off the map and lock into treasure chests. Let's have a look. Now the reader randomly chooses a treasure chest, reveals a gold key, and then moves it up into place on the map, revealing the clue poem on the back of the key. And they advance to the adventure story. The reader is brought into the story again at the end. Treasure Kai must remember the order he found the seven cities of gold, and the reader must do the same. Because the reader was randomly choosing treasure chests, the order will change every time. So when we turn the page, the reader is presented with a memory game. So this app is an example of bringing the reader into the story using interactivity and gameplay within the narrative itself. Kung Fu Robot is an unusual take on a comic book. Let's so you're going to see what an interesting way that the images and texts work on the page. Because they zip in from the sides. It's a lot of fun. And then there's a fun little game called Whack a Ninja. So this game is not part of the story, so it's not within the narrative, but it's relevant to the story. So as you can see, this comic book shows you that not everything's a picture book in a book app world. Now let's have a look at one of my favorite apps called It's Cool to be Clever. This is such a neat nonfiction app and it tells the story of Edson Hendricks, the man who helped invent the design for the internet. First of all, let's look at the story by touching up here the story at the top. What you'll see here is that the story itself is nothing fancy when it comes to functionality. There are images and text. Where this app really gets rich is all the extra content. 
we can find there's all kinds of information about bullying here, including video interviews with Edson Hendricks where he talks about how it felt. So rebellion, I, I rebelled. Uh and then there's information about genuine inventions and situations for inventions and creating a network and all kinds of in information here. A genuine invention is about the rarest thing humans ever produce with their minds. Graphic novels can also be book apps. Here's one called Middle School Confidential, Be Confident in Who You Are. We can read the story. And then by pushing information, we can get messages and we can learn about the cast. So we can learn about each of the characters. It's really a neat graphic novel. Here's an example of a long text book that doesn't use many illustrations at all, but what it does do is it uses 65 decision points and 20 different endings. This book app is called Brush of Truth. So we open it up and we read the start and then we turn the page and then we make a decision. And we do that throughout the book. Finally, I want to show you another long text book app called Dracula's Guest. Sometimes the animations are subtle. Sometimes you touch the app to make something happen. Let's touch the coffin. It can be very beautiful. Look at what happens with mood here in the lighting on page 12 as the cloud goes by. So I hope these different types of examples show you what can be done in the book app format. We've got poetry, we've got picture books, we've got long text books, we've got very interactive book-like games. It's a really neat medium to work within.